Hello, welcome pen friends. My name is Chris and I'm back with another Twisby video. Today we're going to be talking about the Twisby Eco T. Um, and it's very similar to the Twisby Eco, but there are some design differences and some grip differences. And so I'll get into that. It's a wonderful pen and I've written with it for several months now. So I just wanted to uh, add it to my uh, Twisby reviews. And then I'm waiting uh, on my... Uh, Twisby Go Pen, and they'll they'll be here on uh, Monday. So, <laughs> so I just want to get get started here. And uh, this is the blue one that was a limited edition, and it is so much like the other pen. But well, I'll get the other regular Eco out in just a minute. But there are there's the shape difference is the main difference. Let's see if I can hold that up. And in a minute we'll compare them, but it's the same idea. It's the the piston filler, the built-in piston. I did get a, a fine nib on this one, which is unusual for me, but I wanted to try Twisby's fine nib, and I had very few pens that were fine nib, and and none that were really uh, high quality, you know, long-lasting type pens. So I really wanted to to do that, especially to have the ink capacity, because this with a fine nib. Uh, filled up lasts me a long time for note taking so um, as usual I've got a bunch of notes but there's just so much to say about this right now I have in it uh, Pilot Aroshisuku I hope I said that right <laughs> Konpeki and it's real real pretty before that I had one of my all time favorites Diamine Aqua Lagoon because of its shading properties and I just decided to change it up a little I had been gonna keep just this ink in it and I'm not tired of looking at the ink in fact I have it in another pen I have it in the Twisby Diamond 580 now but uh, I just decided to try a different one and this is a really pretty ink too so that's what I have in it um so in my Rhodia Gold book, I did a bunch of writing with it, and I'll show you that, and then we'll look at the pen some more and compare it to the Twisby Eco. But it isn't going to compare as well to the other reviews I did because of it being the fine nib. But you can see the difference, because over here, this was the Diamond 580, and this is the Twisby Eco T. But I like this because a lot of the notebooks I write in are actually it's better for me to have a fine nib in some of my cheaper uh, daily writers and journals that I just write in like morning pages lots and lots of writing and it's not a rhodia paper you know but it, it goes wherever I go in other words I have never had trouble writing on any of the paper that I have from um, even the drier uh, Claire Fontaine it does fine on it so um, it is, uh, it, it comes, oh gosh, I'm getting out of order here. Well, we'll do that in a minute. I'll show you what it comes with. The packaging is what I meant to start with. And it's a light pen. It's quite a bit lighter than, of course, than the Diamond 580. Um, let's see how it compared to the Eco. We can flip back. I've got quite a bit of notes now. Okay, so it weighs the same as the, the regular Eco. <clears throat> and then it has the same ink capacity, too. It's almost uh, two milliliters of ink that it holds. And then it's got the steel nib available in extra fine to 1.1 uh, millimeter. And then I do the I do the measurements unposted because that's how I write with these pens. And it is 130 millimeters unposted. And then um, I noticed that right now what's being offered in that pen is a, it's a yellow green edition of it. It's different. It's not the, the blue one. Or you can still get the blue one on eBay and other places. And who knows where else. But, you know, for general stock, right now it's the yellow and green one, I think, that they're selling. So it's got the smooth nib, like all the other Twisbees, and a very comfortable grip. We're going to need to look at that. It's very contoured. It, it It's more contoured than the Eco, and not quite as much as the Lamy, which I have a Lamy that we could compare it to as well. It's a little bit difficult to do because of it being so clear in that area. You may not be able to see it, but you, I can describe it. Um, it's an affordable pen, <clears throat> comes in under $30. I got mine at Goulet uh, Pens. And then it's it's up there, it's got quality materials, which you feel like you've got a really good, well-made pen. Um, on the con side, it's kind of like I really don't want to write anything there, because it isn't, it's just a personal thing for me. Is I recognize that it's, it's not as quick and easy to do the maintenance on the pen, but it will be as I get used to it. 
um, you know, I haven't torn them apart yet to, to uh, grease the piston, but I will. I <laughs> will be doing that. The longer I have them, the closer we get. <laughs> so, and then the nib unit doesn't screw out like it does on the 580. But, and I, I'm, you know, I've been seeing and aware of people saying that the uh, uh, feeds on the Twisbees, you should be very, very careful with them so you don't harm them. So that's something that I have in mind. Um, and then, would I purchase this pen again? Yes. Yes, I would. Um, in uh, different nib sizes, you know, because the way it is, I would, would not be swapping nibs with this kind of pen. And so um, I would definitely if that was uh, if if I needed one if I had a particular need and right now I don't think that that four letter word need comes into my pen hobby at all it's more want right now but let's take a closer look at the packaging I meant to do that right off the bat but this is it comes in a, a cardboard sleeve and it came to me with tape on it but that doesn't matter no big deal and then this little plastic thing and that comes with your wrench and your uh, liquid silicone grease in there and a bunch of papers cut papers top and bottom okay and then you know it gives you some notes on on what to do it, it, this is the note about using a cloth or tissue to soak up your excess ink on the feed and that's important so you don't get drop of ink uh, on your paper, you know, I, I have uh, found out why they say to do that. <laughs> so, so it's nice, you know, I, I like these little boxes. You could take everything out and end up with a little pen box. So I just haven't, I've kept them all kind of together in there. But, but uh, what I like about this pen the most is it's got that really, it's contoured, but not too, too drastically. But you, I can feel it better on the Eco T than I can on the the regular eco and it's just extremely comfortable to write with in fact i was kind of sorry that i got this with a fine nib since i don't use it as much but that those kinds of things change all the time as i get more and more time and more and more like experiments i call them in writing that i i discover what what i want to write on which paper best with which pen you know and i definitely i used the last i used right down to the bottom of the Diamine Aqua Lagoon. So, I mean, it's not as if uh, <laughs> I uh, <clears throat> didn't like writing with it. I do. So, it, like I said, it's got that that contoured shape. And uh, let's get, I need to get the other pen. I really want you to, uh, this will be easier because since we've got the blue one, that's the Eco T, and this one's clear, there shouldn't be as much confusion about which pen I'm, I'm holding where. But, um, so you can definitely see the difference because there's a different shape. The Eco T has that, you know, rounded triangular type look. And then over here we've got the stop sign shaped, kind of octagon shape. Um, so they're different and I don't really have a preference. I think they're both really pretty. We might be able to compare it better if, if I had a solid color on this one. I, I think it's always hard when you're comparing um, clear demonstrator with something with color like this i hope that's staying in focus oh my so you know that's your that's your difference and of course you can see the the inner cap real easily because of this being clear and then let's see what we can see down in there not a whole lot that you can see down in there but um so that's that's that part let me keep these caps separate and um it's going to be really hard to be able to actually see what I'm talking about. But this, I feel like this has like a a really comfortable, slightly more contoured shape to it. And it just makes writing real comfortable. And, you know, I've always felt like my uh, Eco was comfortable too. But there's something different about this. Hard for me to actually describe. Except I can feel it. I could feel that it's it's not as pronounced. So that's when let's get out let's get out the Lamy. We might as well. Um, now with the Lamy, you can probably even see it in the demonstrator how that's that's very pronounced. Very you can feel it and see it. Uh, that's a well, people call it a forced grip. Um, I like it. It works for me because that that's pretty much my my comfortable grip. But um, in uh, varying degrees, what what you would have would be. 
the regular Eco has the least amount of that forced grip, in my opinion. <laughs> you know, like people may have different opinions. And then, then this one has uh, a little more. It's a little more pronounced, and I feel like I got a good, you know, good little helper on where to hold that pen. And then when you go to the Lamy, um, you, you could give it to a, a small child, and they wouldn't have trouble with it shifting around. You can tell where you're fingers ought to, ought to be to hold it like that in a tripod grip so that's that's where I think the most differences are is is the the shape whoops <laughs> and the clips are the shape of the pen and and um I would love to see an all clear one but you know I'm not I'm not thinking they probably would do that because they have the eco for that that maybe they will you never know what a company will do but if I could uh, put in an order I'd say I'd like an all clear one with that exact grip and everything. And then, uh, did we look at the, the ends? See, it's the same thing on the ends. Whoops, let me see if we can. So that's kind of neat. They're different. They've got those very distinct shapes. Um, and it isn't fair. If, if only this were, uh, the Eco were one with a white or black or, or any color, then you'd kind of be able to compare it better. But uh, they're both great pens. Um, I don't, uh, when I write with the uh, regular one, I don't feel like, oh, I wish I was writing with the Eco T. Uh, I don't really notice it that much. There's not that much difference, but I do definitely uh, enjoy the grip on this one. So I hope I'm not forgetting a bunch of stuff. I guess that's why I, I write things down. In a minute, we'll, uh, we'll do a writing sample on camera. But first, I kind of like to show you... Um, the comparison pens or the pens that I got out and of course we already um, we already did some pretty good comparing here with the with the regular eco and then of course this is a, our pen of the day the eco T uh, now this one we just got done talking about the other day which was the diamond 580 which is up there in the $60 range so it's it's twice as much um, and you know you're you're I think paying for uh, the beauty, the aesthetics, the, the extra detail and uh, materials that they put into this. And this is a heavier pen, too. And I can't really compare the Lamy for it being, it's not a piston pen. Right now it has a cartridge in it, and it also, I have a converter, too, that I could use with it. But, um, but I wanted to, to, the reason I wanted to get it out was because really it, it's uh, the grip that we were really talking about today. So that's why I got that out. And this is also in the very, very same price range. So um, that's, you know, that's a, a factor. Now, this pen I can't say a lot about because I'm still working with it. This is the Fountain Pen Revolution j -Upper, And it's a piston filler. And uh, it's a little bit different in some ways because it has like an ebonite feed. And you have lots of choices with your nibs. And also the nibs pull out real easily and you're not going to hurt the feed. So I've, uh, um, it's a little bit apples and oranges, but it is a pen that's under $20 and is a piston filler. It's from India. And I'm not ready to really critique or talk about this pen yet because I feel too green with it. Uh, I've written with it quite a bit. I've had a few little issues, but I'm thinking a lot of that could have been new, newbie stuff, you know, and so I want to give it more and more attention before I do a review on the pen. But it is a, another option that's out there. And then, of course, the ever, <laughs> the ever popular to me, uh, Wing Sung 3008, um, which you've seen and seen and seen, but still, um, being an under $4 pen, and even with a Lamy nib added, it's, um, you know, $18 that I have in this pen, it's awesome, so, um, but you're not going to get Twisby type materials, you're going to get screw that, uh, that uh, rust unless you switch it out you're going to get a little bit of fussiness here and there and and definitely nowhere near the kind of worksmanship for this pen but you're going to get a good writer and it won't be hard at all even with the nib that comes on it so um so those are the comparables and uh let's do a writing sample where you can see me write and <laughs> see if i if i can pull it together here um, i'm gonna move this over here so Oh, and I forgot to mention, this does post nicely. I mean, it stays in and everything. But I don't I don't like to write with it that way. I find it, it's too, um, 
Well, it's too much for my little hand. I'm sure other people that had bigger a bigger hand where maybe it would rest back here further, that might be okay. But you don't, there's no problem at all if you want to do that. You can, so. Let's see if I don't knock everything on the floor. So, this is Twisby. Eco Tea. With a fine nib. And it's the blue. Okay, and then now um, I will say, and this is probably real general, and and not it's not something I really, but with this ink, uh, I I don't, it's not quite the same as it was with the Di Diamine Aqua Lagoon, so it's either me or, or or maybe the Diamine Aqua Lagoon actually is a wetter ink or something because I just noticed the flow was a little better with that ink, and I I know that that's a thing that we have to kind of be aware of which pens write well with which ink. And it's just something that I had that other ink in there for so long, you know. Um, <laughs> the quick brown fog. See, I'm so used to writing with a, a juicier nib. And there's nothing wrong with this one, but when you get on this Rhodia paper, it's over the lazy dog uh, but I do I do feel like that other ink in fact I thought oh I put this ink and now I'm gonna do the review and I probably would have done better with the other ink but there doesn't seem to be anything I've, I've you know I've looked at it and there's nothing wrong uh, I think I just have to keep in mind that uh, let me do a little printing that these fine nibs it's different, you know, and I'm used to the, the medium, so. But it keeps up, and it's it's lovely, you know, it's just lovely. And on certain paper, it, it'll react different anyway. This is Rhodia um, dot pad, so. But that'll give you some idea, and hopefully this video has helped you, you know, if you were considering, well, which, which might be better, or, you know, um, just to, to learn a little bit more about the pens and see them up close, uh, you know, compared like that. I like them both, and uh, I wish that this one was clear in a way, because that's just how I am. But that is the pen review, and now we have a crystal. We have a pretty crystal that I found the other day when I went to uh, Solomon's Mine, and this is a piece of fluorite. And um, I've showed you before my green one. This is a little piece of green, and I'm sure that's turned up before in my videos. But this is a purple piece, and I was excited when I found this. So, let me go to the... This is uh, the Crystal Bible by Judy Hall. And there's some general information about it, and then there's a specific little uh, sentence or two about the purple. So, uh, but I liked... Really, I put an arrow right to this, because this, this sentence here is so neat. It says... This is the best crystal to use to overcome any form of disorganization. Well, I realized, well, I should have bought several of them because I, I need it all over my desk. And it's funny because before I looked this up, I remember thinking this crystal has such a pleasant, um, you know, quality to it sitting here on my desk. Not only do I love purple, but... I just felt like it was it was in the right place on, on my desk and a pen desk and a, and on my desks they they are um, hot spots for clutter so it's pretty neat but it goes way beyond that of course it talks about uh, the stone cleansing and stabilizing the aura and it talks about healing fluorite draws off negative energies and stress of all kinds. It cleanses, purifies, dispels, and reorganizes anything within the body that is not in perfect order. That's a heavy claim. I, I guess I better be carrying this around everywhere all the time. Um, because just, you know, to have that type of energy close to you, it sounds good to me. It really does. And it, it over here, it talks about it being highly protective, especially on the psychic level. Helps you discern when outside influences are at work within yourself and shuts off psychic manipulation due to uh, an undue mental influence. Okay, but I wanted to go over to where it talked about the specific colors. And it says violet and purple fluorite. 
stimulates the third eye and imparts common sense to psychic communication. It is an excellent meditation stone. It is useful in the treatment of bones and bone marrow disorders. And there, there's a whole bunch more, of course. Um, it talks here about it being a powerful healing tool dealing with infections and disorders, benefits teeth, cells, and bones, and repairs DNA damage. It is powerful against viruses, especially as an elixir. Okay, I've never done that. I've never put a crystal in water and, and drank the water. I'm afraid I might choose the wrong one. Fluorite regenerates the skin and mucous membranes, particularly the respiratory tract, and heals ulcers and wounds. I always think of these things as uh, in supplement to the other things that we do, the, the more um, orthodox things that we do in medically and so on. But the other thing I wanted to mention is that I just was really attracted to this stone. I didn't look up or I didn't think about what fluorite is when I was in the store. I, I intuitively pick up crystals because in nine times out of ten there'll be something really glaring when I do read about it and I realize why I was attracted to it so that is the crystal now I just wanted to show you one other thing it's just just something I'm working on um, I put it over on Instagram I uh, wanted to make a little uh, pen sleeve you know I make the crocheted ones which I don't have one right here that was brilliant and but I had gone to the quilt store and I got a little piece of uh, kind of uh, fleece material and it's so funny because the lady there that was trying to help me she said dear that's really hard material to work with and I said I know I know but I'm going to try it anyway and she was right oh she was right but anyway it it came out okay I got my little moon man in there I'll get it out in a minute um just disregard the sewing though because I was frustrated with that but so the moon man mini fits right in there and it's a little harder to put back in because I, I think I got carried away or something zigged or zagged at the end. But anyway, this is the kind of thing that I like to do for fun is just figuring out what I can make. And, um, and then the story behind that, it has to do with pen allowance because right after I finished spending my pen allowance this month, then I found out that Rickshaw is making these the exact size for the Moon Man. So you can find it. You could find it in their regular, where you go under um, accessories and then pen sleeves. Then um, it's listed as one of the sizes. And I'm not sure if it's extra short or something like that. But you'll see it because out beside it, it tells you the, the different pens that will fit in it. So it's it's a short one and and wide enough for the Moon Man. Now anyway, until I can get a rickshaw, <laughs> I got a I got a Chris sign. So <laughs> I just wanted to show you. I haven't tried making another one, but I'm going to. Um, I've got some cat material with little paw prints on it. That this is purely hobby and fun for me. So okay, so I hope you enjoyed the video and. And uh, the next pen that I'll be talking about, not reviewing because I wouldn't have it long enough, will be the Twisby Go pen. And I'm excited because those that's going to be my first broad and my first um, stub in the Twisby line. And it'll get it's a nice introduction, I think, and it'll get me a chance to have fun with the new pens. So thank you very much for viewing, and I will see you next time. Bye now.